In my opinion, there are seven reasons why most self-taught programmers as well as college graduates fail in development. Let's talk about it. I've talked to a lot of people that learn how to code, whether it's through the college route, whether it's through the boot camps, or whether it's self-taught, and a lot fail. And when I talk to them, it's usually for the same reasons. And I wanna address this. In my opinion, I think these are seven of the biggest reasons why most people fail when learning how to code. Number one, cutting corners. You go through the process of learning how to code and you're in the stage of learning your fundamentals. And the first thing you do is rush past it because you wanna get to learning all the cool stuff. You know what? I'm gonna cut all these corners just so I can make a random quote generator. Doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? Well. You can't build a building on a very weak foundation because it's gonna crumble. Here's the same concept here. When you're rushing through all your fundamentals, you get to a point where everything is so confusing and so hard that there's no way for you to understand what you're doing and then you end up going backwards. Now on top of that, you're getting demoralized and you're feeling like you're a failure and you feel less of an excitement and an incentive to keep doing this. No cutting corners, we're done cutting corners. No cutting corners. When you cut corners, you're cutting yourself. Simple as that. You're breaking your own momentum. You're breaking your own strides. And you're going to have to go back and learn them anyway. There's no one that has been able to thrive in any field in the world without knowing the basics. It's just, it's just there. You have to do this. It may be monotonous. It may be boring. But I guarantee you, if you go through your fundamentals, you are going to become a much stronger developer and you will be able to thrive in the long run don't skip them hey do me a favor and like this video helps me out with the youtube algorithm number two you get all the udemy courses and you do none of them this isn't pokemon you don't need to get them all you don't need to buy all these courses and never touch them i would rather you buy one or two and actually do them than buy 50 and never touch them you don't need to buy everything just because it's on sale what i need you to do is actually learn the things that you're buying because that's what's going to make you a developer no interview in the world has ever asked hey how many courses do you own instead they're saying what projects have you made what can you do with this language what are the things that you are able to produce what problems can you solve that is only going to come from your learning it's not going to come from randomly purchasing something and feeling good about that purchase. You need to do them. And here's the other thing. You need to watch that course and actually type along. You need to build these projects. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people where they're like, yeah, watch this course, but they haven't built anything off of it. What are you doing watching and not building? Your concepts don't become permanent until you build something. I can't tell you how many times where I've watched a tutorial and then I'm ready to type and then I just stare at the screen. Like my mind goes blank. Like I don't remember what they said even two minutes ago. I have to build along. They said this one line. Okay, let me build this one line. They're doing this. They're doing that. That is what's going to make the concept completely permanent. So that way you are able to recall and reuse that again in the future. Number three, shiny object syndrome. I can't tell you. I've been a victim of this myself many times where you see something new and exciting and everybody's talking about it and you're like, well, stop learning this and let me go learn that. When you keep jumping around too soon, it's good to be familiar with many languages, but if you jump around too soon before you actually know something in that language, you're actually going backwards. Let's say you were learning JavaScript for two weeks and then you decided, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go learn Java. It's not the same thing. They're completely different worlds. You need to get comfortable in JavaScript first before you jump to that next level. Otherwise, when you go back to JavaScript, you forgot all your concepts again. Get at least comfortable in whatever you're learning, then you can go explore other options. But I would rather you get very good where you can actually build a couple projects in that one language then go explore other things. It's completely fine to have complementary languages to your main language. It's good to know a lot of things, but it's also good to specialize in something and be valuable in that area. Focus on whatever you're learning. There's no reason why you need to be jumping around nonstop. Don't jump around. Don't get excited by the new shiny object. Focus on your path so you can become valuable as a developer. Number four, this is a big one in my opinion. Not giving yourself enough time I can't tell you how many people I've talked to They're like, hey man, I've been learning for three months. I still haven't got a job yet. I know a lot of boot camps they advertise, you know, three months to become a developer. Truth of the matter is, for a lot of us, it's gonna take a little bit longer. 
it's definitely it definitely took me longer than three months i most of the people i know that have become developers have taken way longer than three months i know some people have done it i get it people talk about it three months oh it changed my life it may not happen that quickly you need to give yourself permission to take your time to learn the concepts necessary let's say you're able to get a job very quickly let's say you were able to get in there and when they hire you their expectation is you're going to produce their expectation is you're going to be bringing value to the team you're going to bring value to the table you're not coming there because it's a camping trip you're coming there because you're going to produce well what happens is you skip your concepts you cut your corners you rush through these things now you're losing your job right away we need to get somewhere but we also need to stay there that's the key staying there is important not just rushing there to the finish line and then not being able to get the trophy we want to get there all the way and begin our careers now here's another thing there's only so much that you can learn to be job ready a lot of it is you're going to learn on the job but if you don't have your concept and your base strong it's going to be very hard to scale up in a very quick period of time a lot of times, a lot of companies want to see you produce right away. They give you a couple weeks. They want to see you do something. But if you don't have the skills necessary, they may cut you short. So make sure you're learning what is required of that position. Number five, a programmer is learning when no one is watching. I can't tell you how many times I see people that try to advertise, oh, I'm learning this, I'm learning that. But when they're by themselves, they're not actually learning anything. Like they want to talk about becoming a programmer and they want to do these things, but they're not actually learning these things. And then they wonder why it's taking them a lot longer. A great example I can give you. I talked to somebody. They were like, man, I've been trying to get a job for six years as a developer. I was like, whoa, six years. If you spent six years learning JavaScript, you must be as good as you can be without having any job experience, right? You must have some projects. You must have a great website, something that you've done for six years. Well, no, I don't have this and I don't have that. And well, what have you been doing for six years? Or has it been, I learned a little bit here, stop for a while, learn a little bit there, stop for a while. More often than not, it's the second option. It's not the first option. And what ends up happening there is you're not producing any value. You're not bringing things. Again, when you go to a company to get hired, you are an investment. They're investing in your future. They're investing in your abilities. They're investing in your ability to learn, produce, and problem solve. You need to de-risk yourself by proving that you know what is required of the position, that you know what is required of the language, and that you are able to actually go in there and produce. Well, if you're not producing projects, it's harder for them to believe that you know what you know. Make projects because that is a way that they can see that, hey, this person is actually active in development. They're making things. They understand concepts. Obviously, they're producing something. So to some degree or another, they know how to program. If you're not doing any of that, and then you say, I've been learning for six years with no projects, it's really hard to convey that in a conversation, in an interview, and pretty much to anyone that's a developer. Number six, abandoning projects. I know we all do it to some degree, but when you're developing projects over and over and over, and then halfway through, you just drop them. What happens when you need to go into an interview, when you need to go to other developers, when you need to go to a prospective employer, or even to a prospective client, and you have nothing finished to show? You need to finish some projects. I get it. Sometimes we get bored with a project, or we realize halfway through, like, this is a really bad idea. Go on to a good idea, then. Go produce something that you can show off and add to your portfolio, to add to your GitHub, that you can add somewhere where people can see. You gotta produce something. You can't have 50 undone projects. Like that's not something you could talk about in an interview or on a resume. You can't talk about the things you haven't done. You need to produce, you need to make something. Making things will make you a better developer. It's pretty simple. It's it's. You're only going to make your concepts better by building. I say that over and over and over again. One of my rules to become a better developer fast is CCC, code, code, code. Let those fingers dance on that keyboard. If your fingers aren't dancing, you're not making progress, you're not making projects, and you're not making your goal any closer. You have to let them dance around. You have to make some things. You have to do some things. Stop abandoning projects. I understand if it's a bad one, go into a good one, but you need to produce something. Step number seven, this is one I had trouble with for a while. Cannot take constructive criticism. You are not your code. I understand if someone mocks you or makes fun of you, yeah, you don't have to take that. But if someone is giving you constructive criticism on your code, like let's say you go to a code review, let's say you go to a meetup, let's say someone is looking at something that you made and they give you an opinion saying, hey, you can do X, Y, Z in a better fashion. It'll be more efficient and it's a better practice. A lot of people are like, oh, 
I'm a bad developer. That's what you're saying. Oh, I'm bad. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. That's what you're saying. I don't know how to code. I don't know how to code. I've been doing this for a while. I'm a professional. I don't know how to code. If you can't take constructive criticism, there's no way you're ever going to build better products. You are not your code. Your code is an extension of something that you produce, but it is not you. I think a lot of us, including myself, had problems with understanding this. When someone was correcting my code, I was taking it personally like, whoa, you're saying I'm a bad developer. Like it would really mess with me emotionally until I realized, no, they're making me better by showing where I'm weak and now I can improve upon this. That is why I appreciate code reviews. Code reviews, I'll be honest, makes my imposter syndrome go through the roof. Like I start sweating and freaking out. But when someone can actually critique my code, tell me what I did wrong, and allow me a chance to improve that, that makes me better all the time. I have no problem with people critiquing my code, especially when people I work with, because that just means I'm making a better product so I can be a more valuable member of the team, so that way I can produce, and I can make sure I'm not putting extra work on my coworkers that I appreciate. Don't take the constructive criticism personally. It's not against you. It's just against something you produced. Now we can make a better product. Most businesses, the way they scale up is honestly by getting that feedback from customers so they can make the tweaks. This is the same thing here. You're making tweaks on your product to become a better version of yourself. That is how we're going to go from a $50,000 a year developer to a $100,000 a year developer to much higher to working at Fang. It all comes with the same thing. The feedback will make you better because they have more experience than you. So take that feedback, absorb it, reflect on it, and then build a better product. Now, I could talk about this all day, but I want you to check out my other videos. So check out my other videos, and I will see you on the next one.